This lesson is for section 611. We're going to be using the change of base and solving some log equations today. So our objectives for today are to use common logs to solve normal log equations. And we're also going to use something brand new, which is called the change of base formula, to use our calculator so we can get approximate values for our solutions as well. OK, so let's uh, begin with just some review here of solving logs by applying log properties. So I'm going to do a few problems with you guys and let you guys just get extra practice and check your answers with the key. So let's begin with number one, and then we'll kind of skip around from there. So in number one, I want to take that two out in front here and bring that and make that the exponent here to make that log base three of x squared equaling log base three of nine. Now that the bases for both logs here are the same, I can equate my arguments. So x squared should equal nine. I'll get two different solutions here a positive or a negative 3. And I want to make sure that when I plug it back into the original, it doesn't leave me with a negative argument. Now negative 3 would, so my only solution here would be x equals 3. So that negative does not work. OK, number 2, I'm going to a pretty similar strategy here. I'm going to take that and bring this out here. So this is now the exponent on that argument. So I have log base 7 of x equals log base 7 of 8 to the 2 thirds. And now I can simplify the right hand side here. So I have log base 7 of x equaling log base 7 of 2 cubed raised to the 2 thirds power. So these uh, will cancel, leaving me with 2 squared. So I have log base 7 of x equaling log base 7 of 2 squared, which is just 4. Now that I have the same base on both sides, I can equate my argument. So x would equal 4. All right, I would like you guys to try number 3. Make sure you're always double checking your solutions also. And I'm going to work on number four and leave you guys to do number five on your own. OK, on number four, we have uh, a subtraction here. So we have a difference. I'm going to use um, a quotient now to combine these logs. So I have log base 8 of 48 over y equaling log base 8 of 4. Now I can set my argument equal to each other. So I have 48 over y equaling 4. And now to get y um, by itself, I'd actually multiply by y first. So I have 48 equals 4y. Now divide by 4, so I have 12 equals y. If I plug 12 back in, I still have a positive argument, so this would be my solution here. OK, for extra practice, I'd like you to try number 5 here and number 6 on your own. And then please check your answers with the key. I'm going to move on to number 7, and we'll complete number 8 together. And you can try number 9 on your own. OK, now in number 7, um, I have a sum here. And both bases for these logs, they're natural logs, so the both, both bases here are e. Um, so I'm going to combine that by writing that as the product of x plus 3 times x, OK, equaling the natural log of 4. Now, when I uh, multiply here, I need to distribute. So I have the natural log of x squared plus 3x equaling the natural log of 4. So now I can equate my argument here equal to 4. So x squared plus 3x must equal 4. So now I'm going to solve this quadratic by factoring. So I have x plus 4 times x minus 1 equals 0 for the factors. And I end up with two solutions, x equals negative 4 and 1. Make sure you're always double checking again. If I plug in positive 1, that gives me a positive 4 here and a positive 1 here. So positive 1 works, but negative 4 does not because I'd have a negative argument here and here. So the only solution here is x equals 1. Um, all right, now in number 8, I would use the same uh, exact strategy here. I would try to ch change this into one log. So the natural log of 4x, so I multiply here, 4 times x equals, on the right-hand side, the natural log of e squared. Now, because the arguments um, can be set equal to each other, the bases here for the logs are both the same, I have 4x equals e squared. Okay, so I just drop the natural logs on both sides, and I have 4x equals e squared. Now I'm solving for x, so I would divide and end up with x e squared over 4. So x equals e squared over 4. But let's say when I came back to this here, when I first simplified this, um, I looked at the natural log of e, and I realized that that canceled each other out and would equal just 2. So let's say I solved it, and I simplified here and made that 2. Well, a lot of students will get stuck here. And they won't know how to solve for x. Remember, whenever you're stuck, you're going to switch the method that you're going to use, and you're going to turn this into an exponential equation. So remember, this is log with a base of e. So we have e squared, e squared equals the argument, right? e squared equals my argument for x. And if I solve for x here, I end up with e squared over 4 
equaling x. So either way, I get the exact same answer here, um, even if I slightly change the way I approach that problem. Now in number 9, I am going to do this one actually with you guys, because uh, some people will do this incorrectly with this negative 6 here. They're not quite sure what they're supposed to do. So I'm going to first start by taking that uh, 3 here and raising that power here. Now if I do that, I end up with log base 5 of x squared plus 9 cubed. Now we probably would not make you ever cube this binomial, right? That would kind of be a lot of work here because you have to foil here and then you have to foil one more time. So in this case, I'm not going to use that same strategy of bringing that 3 and bringing it over here. Instead, I'm going to look um, on the right hand side here, okay? And I notice I have log base 5 of 1. Remember, anything raised to the 0 power would equal 1. So this log base 5 of 1 is actually 0. So I have 3 times the log base 5 of x squared plus 9 minus 6 equaling 0. Now to isolate here this log, I can move this 6 to the other side so that I have 3 times the log base 5 of x squared plus 9 equaling positive 6. Now if I want to try to isolate this log even further, I can actually divide that 3. Remember, this is 3 times this whole thing, so this is just an, you know some number, some value. I'm going to divide the 3 here, so that I have log base 5 of x squared plus 9 equaling 2. Now I'm going to change this into an exponential equation. So again, I'm stuck here, so I'm going to change to an exponential equation. Okay, This is a really big strategy that you want to make sure that you're comfortable with using. So we have 5 to the second power. Right, this is my base, this is my exponent, equals x squared plus 9. So I have 25 equals x squared plus 9. Subtract, we have 16. So x will equal positive or negative 4. Now if I plug in positive 4 in here, I get positive 16 plus 9, so my argument is positive 25. If I plug in negative 4 here, I still get positive 16 plus 9, which is 25. So actually both of these are valid solutions for number 9. All right, the next major part of our lesson is using the change of base formula. So we need to be able to change the base of a logarithm because sometimes we can't evaluate logs like log base 3 of 6 in our heads. So log base 3 of 6 is like asking the question 3 to some power is supposed to equal 6. So let's figure out what that number would be. Well, I can approximate it because I know that 3 to the first is equal to 3, and I know that 3 to the second is equal to 9, so this number here must fall between 1 and 2. But that's not really very close approximation just to say that it's between 1 and 2. So instead, we use our calculators to try to further get a better approximation. So we use the change of base formula. So the change of base formula states that if you have log base A of C, you can change that into a quotient of a different base. So I'm going to use log with a base of x. It doesn't matter what my base is. And I'm going to use the argument here and divide that, so it's be turning into a quotient, of a log with the same base that I'm using above, but now with a here replaced. Okay, so log base a of c can turn into log to any base of c divided by log base x of a. Now, what's convenient for us is to use base 10. So I like to use base 10 because we can use our calculator to use base 10. Our calculator is in base 10. Okay, So typically, this is what we're going to show. So log base A of C, using the change of base formula, is simply log C over log A, where here I'm using the common base 10. Okay, All right, so let's begin here by applying that change of base. So I have log base 4 of 25. Now I can approximate this. I know that 4 squared is equal to 16, and I know that 4 cubed is equal to 64, so this number here must be between 2 and 3. But that's not really close enough, so what I'm going to do is use change of base. I know that log base 4 of 25 is the same as log of 25, with a base 10, divided by log base 10 of 4. So now I'm going to use that calculator um, and plug that in. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm simply going to punch in log of 25 divided by log of 4. Now, um, we use our calculator in the change of base because our calculators can only do base 10. 
Uh, I think the new calculators can actually do different bases, but the old school calculators could only do base 10, and that's why we need a change of base formula in the first place. So I think some of you might have the ability to do this directly into your calculator, but for those of you who do not, you need to use uh, change of base formula. Okay, so anyways, we get an approximation. And remember how we talked about this value would be between 2 and 3? Um, here it clearly is 2.322. So this is the approximate value for log base 4 of 25. All right, I would like you guys to try 2 on your own. And number 3 here isn't really any different um, because of that radical here. I just want to go through it with you just in case you're kind of thrown off by it. This is equivalent to using our change of base, log base 10 of root 5, divided by log base 10 of 6. So in my calculator, I'm going to type in very similar, similarly, log of root 5. And I'll close the parentheses on this. Divided by log of 6. And I end up with 0.449. So this is approximately 0.449. Okay, in the last section of our notes here, it says to use logs to solve exponential equations. Now, um, in our directions, it says state your answer as an exact answer, and then we're supposed to approximate our answer with our calculator to the nearest thousandths place. Now, in example one, we actually don't want to use logs at all to solve this exponential equation because I can actually rewrite 27 with the base of 3. So this is 3 to the x equaling 3 to the third, so x will simply equal 3. Now in number two, I don't really have that option because I cannot rewrite 120 in terms of five. So instead in this one, I'm gonna use a log on both sides. I'm gonna take the log base five on both sides here. So this will cancel, leaving me with just x. So x equals log base five of 120. Now, for those of you guys who like to use the definition of a log, you would have gotten this exact same thing by using the definition by stating five, or I'm sorry, log, base 5 of my argument, 120, is equal to the exponent x. So I get the exact same thing whether I use inverse operations or the definition of a log. Okay, now, this would be the exact answer. Okay, this is exact. So when it says find the exact answer, that's what I'm looking for here. Now, the second part says find the approximate answer as well. So we're going to approximate our answer by putting this into our calculator. So in our calculator, we change this into log with a base 10 of 120, divided by log base 10 of 5. So now I plug this in. So log of 120 divided by log of 5. Oops. And that gives me the approximate value of 2.975. So this is approximately 2.975. So make sure on these that you are rounding correctly, okay, because it says round to the nearest thousandths. Um, but also that you're using the correct notation. I'm not writing equals 2.975. I'm using this specific symbol here, which means that it's approximately 2.975. This is my exact here. This is my approximate. Okay. All right. Now, in uh, number three, I have e to the x equals 52. Now, don't get confused. This is just like 2.7, but we have e here, right? So we're going to use a natural log on both sides. So let's use the natural log on both sides to isolate that x. So you have x equals the natural log of 52. Now, in this case, um, when you plug this in, you're just going to type right in natural log of 52. And we end up with 3.951. So this is approximately 3.951. So here's my exact. And this is my approximate. All right, in number four, um, let's take the log of four on both sides. So if we take log base four on both sides, this is going to cancel me with 2x equaling log base four of 27. Now, if I want to get x completely alone, I need to divide by two. So I have x equaling log base four of 27 divided by two. Now, in my calculator, to input this, it's going to be a little bit different. I want to type in first. Uh, let's actually use change of base first, sorry. So I'm going to use change of base in the numerator. So I have x equaling log of 27 divided by log of 4. That whole answer then is going to be divided by 2. So let's do that real quick. Um, I think it's helpful if you just divide it first. So let's do log base 27 divided by log of 4. And then hit enter here. Then take that answer and divide by 2. Okay, that way you won't mess up, I think, on inputting anything. 
and we end up with 1.1889, or 1.189, I should say. Okay, so this is approximately 1.189. So here was the exact answer. This is the exact. Here's the approximate. All right, um, I'd like you guys to try five on your own. And I'm going to move on to number six, and then finally uh, finish with number eight. Okay, number six, I have e raised to the 2x minus 3 equals 42. Now, in this case, I'm going to raise, or I'm, take, I'm sorry, take the natural log on both sides instead of raise it to the power. I'm going to take the natural log on both sides. Here, I'm going to cancel that out, and I'm left with 2x minus 3 on the left-hand side equaling the natural log of 42. Now, if I want to get x alone here, I'd have to get rid of that 3 first. So I'm going to add 3 to the other side so that I have 2x equals the natural log of 42 plus 3. Then I'm going to divide out that 2 so that I have the natural log of 42 plus 3 over 2. Now what I would like you guys to do is either put that in parentheses, the 42, or write the 3 out in front. You can write that as 3 plus the natural log of 42. Otherwise, it kind of looks like you're taking the natural log of 42 plus 3, which is really the natural log of 45. So be careful about that. So here is my exact answer. And now I want to write um, or find that approximate answer. So I'm going to take 3 plus the natural log of 42, hit enter on this, and then hit divide by 2. Oops. Divide by 2. There we go. And I end up with x is approximately 3.369. So here's my approximate, and there was my exact. All right, um, last up, number 8. If I want to get x alone here, the first thing I need to get rid of is actually the 4. So I'm going to subtract that 4. So I have e to the x minus 3 equals 6. So always try to isolate your variable as much as you can before you, you know, begin doing anything to both sides of the equation. All right, now, um, instead of using um, the natural log on both sides, let's do uh, based off the definition, okay, based off the definition of a log. So I have log base e of 6 equaling x over 3. So log base e of 6 equaling x over 3. Now, if I want to get x alone, I'd have to multiply by 3 on both sides, right? Well, I, if I do that, I have 3 times the log base e of 6 equaling x. So let's try to plug this into our calculator, okay? Using change of base, this value here is log of 6 with a base 10 divided by log e. And then I have that 3 out in front. So I would take that value, and then I'm going to multiply that by 3 to equal x, okay? So there's multiple ways to, you know, to solve these log equations. There's not like one, you know, one way always. But let's type that in. We get log of 6 divided by log of e. Oops, not m. There we go. Okay, so make sure that's e here. And then I'm going to take that number and multiply by 3. So I get approximately... 5.375. So approximately 5.375. Okay, now let's say I did not do that right back here. Let's say here, right away, I recognize this and I decided to take the natural log on both sides. So I used inverse operations as opposed to using the definition here. So if I'm going to do that, I would take the natural log on both sides. This will cancel and I'm left with x over 3 equaling the natural log of 6. Now to get x by itself, I'd multiply by 3. So I have 3 times the natural log of 6. Now when I plug this in, it's obviously a lot less work than what I just did on the left hand side here. When I plug this in and I try to type in 3 times the natural log of 6, I get the exact same answer, 5.375. So like I said, it's there's a lot of different ways to solve these. There's no correct way. Um, just as long as you're using sound mathematical operations, you should be fine. So whether you want to use the definition or you want to use inverse operations, um, it's up to you. I just prefer inverse operations because usually it's much quicker. Okay? All right, that's the end of the lesson. I'll see you guys tomorrow in class. Make sure you're trying those problems and checking your answers with the key. Nice job.